On the breakfast, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, warns political parties and candidates against the use of public facilities and religious centers ahead of political campaigns for the presidential and national assembly elections. Also on the breakfast, the federal government signs a memorandum of understanding with Israel and Japan to commence assembling and manufacturing of smart automobiles by 2023. We'll also be looking through today's newspapers, analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning right here. Thank you for joining us. We apologize for bringing you The Breakfast a little behind schedule due to some technical issues, but it's a good thing that we're here. We set off with our first conversation. As always, we bring you uh, conversations that generate different reactions in different spaces. And number one is that uh, this, it's been a talk in different spaces on Twitter. You have to go to Instagram and on Facebook. And even in real time, uh, everyone's talking about obese supporters holding that rally in Onichara. Now, this is not the first time we're talking about a rally. In the last week or thereabout, this has been rallies have been held in some parts of the country. And the supporters have not held back because they constantly go out to trip out their support. We've had a rally, uh, I mean, the people going out, you know, uh, to chunk out their support or throw their support in Port Harcourt, in uh, Edo State, in Cross River State, among others. But yesterday, supporters of Labour Party's presidential candidate, Peter will be matched on the street of Onicha, that's Anambra. And let's not forget that Anambra is his constituency. Once upon a time, Peter Obi was a governor of Anambra State. And so, uh, you know, you could actually see from the screen. It was tagged a two million man match. At the end of the day, uh, the rally actually uh, started from Zeke's Avenue near the Chinacha Bay Stadium in Fage and the Converge at the stadium. And uh, one of the things that was very, very outstanding was that the men of security, uh, different agencies were very present to ensure that lives and properties are projected and some elements do not take advantage you know of the protests now another issue the, if you look at the conversation that's making the rounds in the spaces is that everyone is talking about some people are saying hey uh, we say that peter will be diversified economy in what way what are the uh, you know evidence to prove that there was diversification of the economy at that time and there's been a back and forth with those who are supporting and not supporting but you are very very sure that there's a hashtag, you know, Anambra State and hashtag Peter Obi somehow on Twitter in other spaces. Well, that's it. Uh, it's also important that in all of this, INEC has also come out to say, hey, it's important that uh, these political parties and uh, those who are vying for political offices understand what the Electoral Act talks about because the period for election and campaigning has not started. But what we have witnessed in the Nigerian space so far is that a lot of persons have, you know, trooped out, you know, to show their support, pledge solidarity or support however you want to target for their candidate. And that's been going on. I'm sure that is something we'll get to see on TV you know it gets to the election proper now very interesting for a lot of people uh, some people have said that this is actually a victory because uh, a supporter of the indigenous people of Biafra she's called Mama Biafra she was in detention uh, has been released from the custody of the Department of State Services that's the DSS uh, because uh, over time she was actually apprehended now in AGF Ifanye Jofo, who uh, confirmed the series or in a series of tweets, actually, that the 80-year-old woman was uh, arrested during a court appearance of Namdi Kanu at the Federal High Court in, uh, you know, at the Federal High Court in Abuja on May the 18th. She was actually arrested and so far she was released and that has also uh, caused a lot of reaction on the internet space. But what people are saying is that they are very excited. This is victory. Uh, the reason that she was detained, she was detained for no reason. And some people think that this might just be, you know, progress for our democracy. Away from that, uh, very, very interesting. I mean, if you live in Lagos or you live around Lagos, then you would definitely experience a gridlock. Uh, some people call it 
traffic, but it can be very disheartening. Now, over time, you have economic pundits saying that uh, the gridlock has contributed to economic loss in the sense that productive time and hours have been spent on the road. Uh, recent times, you have uh, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway experiencing this gridlock. I mean, you can see that. Uh, very, very saddening. It will mean that those who are actually making their way to Lagos or going out of Lagos will be very stressed. Uh, but the federal government, on the other hand, has apologized for the hardship uh, that uh, the road users are facing. It's because of the construction that's going on on the uh, beggar access of Lagos Ibadan Expressway. And the federal government said that uh, for this particular reason, they are going to suspend, you know, the walk, you know, all of the construction or reconstruction on the road to enable uh, her make plans for, uh, you know, traffic management and improved management of the road. But uh, it still brings us back to the issue of saying, hey, what, what exactly is going on with us? I mean, for every time you have a policy, because this is government policy, it's a policy to reconstruct and rehabilitate the roads. But did we carry out an environmental impact assessment? Was, was there any sort of, you know, investigation, understanding the dynamics before we actually venture into it? Because it feels like we're being reactive after the problem has happened and then we sit back and say, hey, it's time for us to act. So one would actually expect that the government would have actually sat back, thought about ways of managing traffic with reconstruction before they embark on it, try to find different ways you know, to ensure that this problem does not arise, that road users do not suffer on the road in the course of their movement from one place to the other. Uh, but it feels like the deed has already been done. It's a good thing that the federal government has acknowledged the suffering of the people and they have apologized. Fingers are crossed. Let's see what happens as we proceed in the course of the day. We take a break now. When we return, it'll be time for us to look through the front pages of our national dailies. We call it Off the Press. Please stay with us. <laughs> 